Alrighty peoples, this is Ross. In today's video, we are gonna be starting my tomato plants. And I really wanted to not necessarily talk about the actual seed starting process in this video. I think that's really a science, right? There isn't too much creativity. If you know how to start seeds, you know how to start seeds. You know, there's not a whole lot of difference with tomatoes versus other things. However, I did wanna really document this whole process from the beginning as we're doing here. This is day one. We're gonna talk about when we plant them. We're gonna talk about maybe some things that we're doing to trellis them and training them. And then of course, look at the plants later in its maturity and of course the fruits. And we're really growing like 30 different varieties of tomatoes. And uh, this is a new for me. This is, I've never really grown this many. I've grown, I think in the past, maybe close to 20, but this is really, we're going off the deep end here. And I figure, why not just keep track of this whole process from day one to the end of the season when we're done? I think we're really trying to inspire a lot of people this year to grow certain things, not just figs, but the tomatoes that we're looking at here today. And then also melons we're gonna get to probably in a different video that will do something similar to this. What I'm gonna cover though is actually starting the seeds, but we're gonna look at some of these varieties before we get into the actual varieties, I wanna mention that it's really important to label your plants. What I have here are my labels that are extremely affordable and easy to find. These you can just get at any hardware store. These are vinyl blinds. And I've basically cut the vinyl blinds up with some scissors into strips. And these little strips are my plant tags. Believe it or not, they last like forever. And even if I take a pencil, oddly enough, and I write the variety name on here with pencil, it lasts for over a season. I'm not even kidding. Uh, this will last an extremely long time. So this first one here is called 10 Fingers of Naples. And I'll just write 10 fingers on here. And I'm not kidding. This will last even till next year, this pencil. It will not come off. And the vinyl blind itself uh, lasts for a very long time. So I'm gonna put that there. And that's just a really great tip because buying blinds at Home Depot or Lowe's or something is so cheap. They're like $10, $15 for as many plant tags as you will ever need. I mean, you'll probably never run out. Um, so yeah, pretty awesome. I'm gonna try to be very sparing with my seed here this year. There's so many varieties. I wanna make sure I have some for next year. Uh, although there's plenty of seeds, particularly in this packet. Uh, I think for the most part, when I'm doing this now in front of you guys, I'm gonna probably use two or three seeds and that's it. The 10 Fingers of Naples though, is uh, a tomato that's really good for paste apparently. And that's kind of why I picked it up. We're, we're trying different varieties here, guys with the intention of using them for different purposes. So some of them will be like for comparing them in terms of different cherry tomato varieties I have. So we'll do a whole entire cherry tomato trial and we'll see which cherry tomato is my favorite. We'll do the same thing with beef steaks, uh, larger size tomatoes. Others, the specific purpose of them is for like paste, um, we're also going to be trying varieties for season extension. We can hang them up in our sunroom or indoors and it'd be very easy to, uh, you know, let them hang there on the vine and actually extend our tomato season. Um, another thing we are going to be doing is drying a lot of these tomatoes. Um, I'm actually going to grow one tomato in particular, but multiples of these I will be drying uh, probably around five or six varieties. I'm gonna really experiment with them dried. I'm gonna not only take them off the vine, hang the vines up and let them sort of ripen and dry on the vine. Some of them may actually dry on the vine on the plant. Uh, but what I really am gonna do is actually take probably the majority of them off, put them in a dehydrator and dry them that way. Um, so, you know, it is what it is uh, in terms of these different types, but what I really want to find out is which of these within that particular type 
not even necessarily a particular color, but a particular use, you know? So again, like I said, drying, canning, extending the season, paste tomatoes. Uh, for example, I'm actually gonna do 12, I have at least 12 different varieties. I think it actually increased recently, but there's at least 12 different varieties of tomatoes that I'm gonna use specifically for sauce. We're gonna make one batch of sauce specifically with that one tomato exclusively, make like 12 different sauces, and then do a taste test and compare them. Let's keep going here. Pork chop. Uh, this I believe is a white, or it's a green or white tomato. Um, Someone recommended this. Someone said it was their best tomato. And when I just basically see that this was somebody's best tomato, I say, all right, well, there must be something there. You know, if it's just excellent or good, I don't even bother. Because someone at some point, probably that knows what they're talking about. I mean, you gotta make a judgment call. Hopefully knows what they're doing and then you just run with it and we'll see what the deal is. And maybe I can find someone that I can rely on for their taste buds and we'll see, maybe there's some other ones that they recommend. This one's Caspian Pink. This one has a high reputation among many, many growers. Very similar to, uh, uh, to like Pink Brandywine. A lot of these pink tomatoes are kind of similar to each other. Pink beefsteak tomatoes. Um, I really like these. In fact, pink brandy wine is my favorite. So we're trying to find something that potentially could beat it. Probably very difficult, but I imagine something exists that is out there that's not only just as good or tastier, uh, but also more productive in some way. Now, I'm not too concerned with the production on these um, on pink brandy wine or really any tomato because I know that if I were to do some grafting in the future, I really wouldn't have too much problems with, uh, with that, with production. Because if you really graft, you really get a more vigorous plant uh, that then ends up setting more fruits. Uh, obviously, the grafting isn't everything, but it's a huge part of getting better production if you if you want it this one's very i'm very interested for this this tomato variety here i'm really struggling here to get three seeds this one's called midnight roma and it's from row seven and row seven for anyone that doesn't know is basically a seed company that's rather new that's been breeding seeds um, for flavor. And they work with some chefs like Dan Barber, uh, different people to really make tastier uh, vegetables. So this one here is, it says a deep purple red paste tomato that's packed with phytonutrients. Uh, in the kitchen, this purple wonder shines for its quick cook and uh, memorable, delicious flavor. I think it makes a, a dark sauce that's very rich. This is obviously, this is one of my favorites. I've talked a lot about green zebra in the past and uh, it's just such an awesome zesty acidic tomato that I think people really need to try. It's green when it's ripe. So it's a green tomato in color and it really is a, uh, a home run there. Like I'm a huge fan of that tomato. And I'm gonna be comparing a lot of the green tomatoes. I think it's gonna be difficult to beat it, in all honesty, because it's so unique in its zest and its tang and its acidity, it's lower sugar that I just find it, I think it's gonna be really difficult to beat if I can ever beat it. Um, because I haven't found anything that I've read or have seen or tasted myself that really has the same level of acidity. I know there's some like variations in the green zebra and people have like used it in breeding and done different things with it, but it always ends up for whatever reason being not as acidic I've, I read. Like there was one I was reading about last night that was basically 
a sweeter version of green zebra. It was like a green zebra beefsteak that was sweeter and larger. And I was like, I don't want something sweeter. I want the same acidity or maybe even more acidic. There is a tomato I'm gonna get to in a, in a minute that we'll talk about, but um, that I think can compete with it. It's called Green Bee. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this one here is called Pianolo del Vesuvio. And this one is gonna be, I think, my biggest tomato recommendation at the end of this season. This is an extremely versatile tomato, it seems like. Sorry guys. But this one I think is extremely versatile because it's really, it has so many purposes. It's uh, really a lot like my Principe de Bor Borghese. I'm very tempted to start many of these and plant them at the community garden. Um, I really want to give that space to the Principe de Bor Bor uh, Borghese because my idea is to grow a lot of those tomatoes and preserve them over the winter time and also to use them as a extending the season. Uh, they make an incredible dried tomato. Now I imagine these do as well. It says here, fairly low water content, thick skins, traditionally hung indoors to extend the season. So this one makes good paste. It's actually a paste tomato by name. It makes good paste. You can hang it indoors to extend the season and you can make them dried, I imagine very easily because it has a low water content and thick skin. So what I'm trying to think of here is if I plant a number of the Principe at the community garden, use them for dried tomatoes, whether I take them off or they dry on the vine and, or dry them myself, whatever I do, maybe half of that row should be this tomato. Because the, even the Principe is for all three uses. It extends the season, you can hang it, it dries well, and it also makes a decent paste. I imagine it does. I've never done it, obviously. But uh, I think this tomato here and also the Principe is probably, for anyone out there, your best bet if you want to add something new. You know, I think adding a new tasty beefsteak is awesome. But, like, this is so valuable, I feel like, this tomato. There's just so much uh, use for it. It's hard to argue against it, you know? Long storing, crack resistant. It's an heirloom. I mean, I, I don't know. For me, it's more practical rather than just saying, oh, I want another tomato because it's supposed to be tasty.